In the U.S., we have a holiday called Groundhog's Day in February. So a groundhog, which is kind of like a nutria, um, pops out of its hole. And if it sees its shadow, it goes back into the hole. And that means that winter will last for another six weeks. If it comes out of its hole and doesn't see its shadow, that means spring will come early this year. I don't know why we let a rodent with questionable eyesight determine the end of winter, but there you have it. The tradition came to the U.S. from Germany, though I feel like the Germans would be more sensible than that. The Czechs, on the other hand, are a little more take charge when it comes to controlling the end of winter, and they've been doing it for over a thousand years. In this video, we're going way back, pre-Christian, pre-Slavic. We're going old school. It's time to burn some witches. On the evening of April 30th, the Czechs celebrate Paleni Čarodenits, the burning of the witches. This tradition comes all the way from Celtic times, when the Boyi, the Celtic tribe that settled the Czech Republic, would practice it there. They believed that evil spirits became the strongest on the night of April 30th. And that's about halfway between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. These evil spirits would wreak havoc on the agricultural community. And so the people developed these rituals to protect their livestock and their fields. So they did a few things to combat these evil spirits. They'd lay uh, sprigs, uh, new greens on patches of cow manure, and they'd throw sand on the, the farm sheds. They'd also light two large bonfires. The name of the holiday was Beltane, which means bright, radiant fire. They would extinguish all other fires in their homes and then use the fire from these bonfires to light new fires to start anew. And while these two bonfires were lit, they would walk their livestock in between them as if through a gate, and that was said to ward off the evil spirits from attacking their cows and, and other livestock. Beltane is still celebrated in Ireland and Scotland today. During the Middle Ages, when Christianity started to take over from paganism, the locals sort of rebranded this, this Night of the Bonfires, and they called it Philip Jakubska Nots, which is Philip and James Night. Those were two apostles, and their feast day were on May 1st, so it made sense to combine them into a Christian holiday. So where do the witches come in? Well, long before the infamous Salem witch trials in the United States, Europe had its own fascination with witches. And between the years of 1500 and 1660, they killed over 80,000 witches in Europe, most of those being killed in what is modern day Germany. So witches have always symbolized an evil spirit. And since they were trying to banish evil, an effigy of a witch was the perfect sacrifice. So they would make an effigy of a witch out of uh, leaves and sticks and scraps of fabric. And when the bonfire really got roaring, they'd throw the witch atop and burn it. In modern day Czech Republic, communities get together for large witch burning parties in their villages. And with the burning of the witch, they bid farewell to winter and welcome spring. The biggest celebrations in Prague take place in Ladronka Park or Žlute Lazne. But this year, since large crowds are forbidden, we'll have to make do in our own backyard, or in our case, in a random German campground. I come from a part of the world where winter is barely discernible from spring. But after moving to Central Europe, I think it's really important to have a ritual like Palani Charodenitz to sort of put an end to a hard, cold, difficult winter, especially this winter. But I feel kind of bad burning my witch that it took me all day to create. She's kind of cute. Maybe if I gave her a hat, that would make her look more evil? Let's burn this witch up. Okay, you wanna try it? Let's light her up! Oh god! Ah! Holy cow! No! Ah! She lost the virus! Another thing Czechs do is they light 
willow branches, like a witch's broom, and they throw it in the air to scare the, the evil spirits away. So after the witches burn, what did the Czechs do with the bonfire? Well, naturally they cook up some sausages. This video is not sponsored, but I highly recommend Beyond Meat plant-based sausages, available in Prague at Rolik and Košík. Yum yum. They drink beer and play music and make merry. Nazdraví. Nazdraví. We don't recommend non-Czech beer. Yeah. <laughs> the ashes that remained from the bonfire were supposed to have magical powers, and so they'd sprinkle them atop their fields to, to wish for a good harvest. Other countries in Europe also have similar celebrations. In Germany, they celebrate Walpurgis Night in honor of an 8th century saint, Saint Walpurga, who battled pests, rabies, whooping cough, and witches. She sounds like a regular Yara Zimmermann. In Bavaria, they dress as demons and light fireworks and play loud music to scare off the evil spirits. In Finland, the students roam the streets wearing what appears to be sailor hats. In Slovakia, they get together a little earlier, around the spring equinox, and instead of a witch, they have an effigy of Morena. She's not a witch, but she's a pagan goddess of death. They light her on fire, and then they drown her in a river, and then presumably beat her with a stick and back over her with a truck. I don't know. The Slovaks seem to have some anger issues. Witch burning is also connected with the first of May and the ladies must go and find a cherry tree and sit under it, hoping to be kissed so that she doesn't dry up, which we just beat her with a stick last month so that she wouldn't dry up. I mean, like she's, she's hydrated guys, she's fine. The night is also said to be the most fruitful night of the year. So if you and your partner are in quarantine and still speaking to each other, this is the time to get closer. She was more flammable than I thought. She was like a child's pajamas in the 70s. I hope it's done. I'm sure it is. Good? <laughs> <laughs>